J Rock as well, right? So um, be, yeah. we we actually just did some some special uh, re premieres of those last shows before COVID uh, over on the YouTube page. Now on the members only thing over there. So if you like your YouTube, we do have a uh, we're trying something new over there for people that that live in the YouTube world uh, with the members only. A lot of the RWA Rise Wrestling Prospect Pro Wrestling is going to be a part of that too. And of course, uh, you can also see uh, Daniel Eads as part of Pro Wrestling Conquests. Uh, in that back catalog over there, IndieWrestling.usvod. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, and of course, uh, if you're interested in Pro Wrestling Conquest, we are starting our pay-per-view system, IndieWrestling.live. You can check out Book More Tag Team Matches, You Cowards. I think I got all the <laughs> words in there. Yeah. I, kept, I kept saying, I, I kept, I kept missing the U when I was typing it out. Uh, so I'm trying to get better with that. So we have this down by the time we go live next Friday, uh, <laughs> September 10th. Uh, and now, 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 Daniel, you're not a part of that that show next week um, because last I knew you don't have a tag team. Uh, but, right. <laughs> it's a, but but it's definitely something exciting. I know that that promotion has been uh, it, like it's been a hot one for you over there. Yeah, I mean, um, they contacted me kind of on a whim because I know a bunch of the guys there, like Brian Edmonds and. Some of the other guys are from Pennsylvania, so they know me from either RWA or Revenge Pro. Uh, a lot of uh, IWC guys from there. And, I mean, it's... I can't remember how long Pro Wrestling Conquest has been around, but since I've started, it's just gotten ridiculously good. Like, I'm beyond proud to work for them. I feel lucky and fortunate to work for them. Because, I mean, compared to most of the guys they book, I'm a nobody. Mm -hmm. and I'll admit that. I'm the, I'm the nobody in the group. So I'm thankful beyond blessed that I get to be a part of what's happening in the magic that they're making and to be a part of the growth that's pro wrestling conquest. I mean, at the rate they're going, when when I see them and I'm at the shows and everything and I'm, you listen to the crowd and you watch the stuff that's happening, these are just the kind of company that could turn into, you know, like a, a Midwest uh, pro wrestling gorilla or something mm -hmm. just with the styles of matching. They, uh, they book the uh wrestlers that they book i mean you want a high impact action you got it you want crazy flips and dives and stuff you got it you want two guys throwing a cowbell back and forth yelling <laughs> yes and no and the crowd going crazy <laughs> you got it i mean it's it's ridiculous i mean hell you I mean just so many of us like athletes per se i'm not dogging anybody but all of us guys that like to do the crazy cool stuff moves and stuff we did everything we could at the last show in your housing <laughs> we were all joking watching Jock Sampson versus Dan Housen, and we were just like, everything we just did, and it, it had nothing to do with that match there. Like, nothing we did in our <laughs> match could top what they're doing, and they're, they were literally doing nothing, but it was amazing. It was great. Yeah, it was, it was a lot, of, a lot of comedy, right? It was a, it was a lot of fun. Right. So. But it, it was perfect for what it was, and yeah. that's, that's the thing about pro wrestling is – especially pro wrestling conquest you know everybody has their their taste on it and i've always in my head thought this like same thing with anime yeah you have your wrestling in your anime that's based around storytelling you have your wrestling in your anime that's you know all action doesn't really make sense sometimes but you know you love watching it's like oh crap that's cool that's awesome it's cool you know what's happening right now and then you have your mix of both and pro wrestling conquest is one of those companies where you get a taste of everything you know your comedy your action your emotion story just anything and everything you can get beer i know they they, they uh, push the beer a lot so there is <laughs> beer to drink while you're at the show i'll, I'll say it for you that, you're welcome that, there that adds up that adds <laughs> an interesting fan element to it for sure yeah. uh so <laughs> i mean i mean hell the last show the crowd went crazy beyond crazy because you had you know mance warner out there wanting a beer and then here comes freaking sandman out of nowhere with mm -hmm. a case of beer and it was just like i mean that crowd went ballistic and maybe they needed the beer after hearing julian hall sing i don't know but you know it, <laughs> it it's just it's a fun time and i think it's going to be one of those companies to keep an eye on and mm -hmm. i hope i can maintain my stay there to be at the pinnacle or at the peak when they reach it. Cause it's, it's going to be an awesome thing to be a part of. Um, I hope Ryan Edmonds is happy with what I'm saying now. We'll call him out on it. Yeah. You gotta, you, but, gotta, uh, you gotta make sure you appease the office. Uh, yeah. So. yeah. 
Gotta uh, get that rub. You that's know? right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, even this next show, just to plug it real quick, um, our friends of the show, like the main event, uh, Generation Generation Dead, uh, G Raver, and uh, and and Gory. Uh, Ace Austin and Madman Fulton from Impact Wrestling, The Awakening, The Formula Ascension, Lenny and Lodi from WCW uh, reuniting on here. Tate Twins, I saw at OVW win the championship when I was down there for a taping. And of course, some other friends, uh, Facade and Danny Moe, Victor Benjamin, Lady Frost. Well, of course, Frost just on the NWA pay per views over the weekend. Uh, and like I said, hey, J Jock Sampson, of course. Jock Sampson, Cole Carter, and some tag team action as well not together i think they pick each other's partners or something yeah that's going on and i won't so. be there because nobody called me to be the mystery partner so okay yeah, i won't be there for that. but i mean in all honesty i might have to honestly buy the show because <laughs> I mean, hell, the, main, the main event versus the awakening when i first found out about that match it's like that's gonna be an awesome match that's yeah. gonna be one that one right there will steal the show i know it's technically a tournament i mean hell for a first round tournament match uh Good luck to everybody else because that one is the show. That matches the entire show right there. So it's it's going to be awesome. Good luck to those guys. I look forward to being able to watch it one way or another. Yep. There's going to be a lot of options in order to, to watch it live or after the fact. Uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, uh, maybe Conquest partnering with us at IndieWrestling.us to do the pay-per-view. So looking forward to uh, to 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 uh, getting that out there for everybody. And it's 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 the best kept secret in West Virginia is Pro Wrestling Conquest. But the reason we have you here, <laughs> the real reason we want to talk to you, is you're a big Dragon Ball Z fan. It comes out in your wrestling, uh, and and I just I just wanted to give you guys all the floor to talk Dragon Ball Z <laughs> for the next over long. So <laughs> first of all. Now, now we 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 were talking about you beforehand about like kind of the the man in tomorrow kind of moniker and things right. like that, and and, and obviously right. over the last several years, like I think I first saw it with you up in Revenge more than anything, Revenge Pro mm -hmm. up in Erie, great Eric Draven, uh, John McChesley. I'm hoping they come back soon. Um, so so, you know, you're obviously a big fan. You're wearing the hat if you guys are on audio. Uh, and uh, oh no, we lost your video for a moment. There you are. <laughs> so oh, yeah. my my phone battery's getting low, so. Uh oh, we're good though. Okay, okay. Well, if you drop off, we know why. We just have Are we to just not yeah. going to point out and set the phone up tomorrow? And we're just not going to point that out. <laughs> no, we, 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 we talked about that before you got on hand. Yes, so. oh, yes. Because I totally yeah, fucking popped for it. I, I popped for it. So, <laughs> so, so, so tell us first of all about like what was the point where you embraced Dragon Ball Z in your uh, in, in your wrestling? Uh, well. I'll reiterate what I said before we got like live and everything. Like when I first started, you know, everyone was like, yeah, I was clean shaven and stuff. Everyone's like, you look like Superman. You look like Superman. You got to do Superman. So my mentor who brought me into the business was like, I'm going to book you as Man of Steel. Then the Man of Steel came out. I hate Superman. I'm just going to throw it out there. I don't care. I hate Superman. We won't break it down why again, but uh, a buddy named Brandon Espinoza came up to me one day and he was like, Hey, why don't you take off with like the man of tomorrow? It's a less promoted moniker of Superman, small line of comics and something clicked and I ran with it and I liked it and it worked. I mean, I've been doing this for nine years now and I felt like it worked for about four to five years of it. And then after a while, I just got kind of burnt out on just being compared to Superman and, I wasn't having fun with it as much, and I don't know. I was I watch a lot of anime, certain things like that with with me. And I think what really made me dive into it was uh, about let's see, pre-COVID, so maybe three, three and a half years ago, I posted a gym photo and I was wearing a Goku tank top, and a fan from RWA commented he was like hashtag bearded goku and i was like holy shit i'm running with that mm -hmm. yes <laughs> and um the more i thought about it and you know everybody gets their inspirations for their gimmick their character from different aspects some people try to replicate um former you know wrestlers or, or current wrestlers whatever like their inspirations are actual wrestlers some people take characters from movies or TV shows. So the more I started watching certain animes, thinking about it, it was just like, I think I can have fun with this again. And I can really make something out of me and my character. 
just pulling these little, you know, Easter eggs of uh, hidden gems and stuff from animes. And it, it just, I feel like it just kind of took off for me as far as, you know, reaching a broader selection of fans and have, and mainly just having fun for me and being proud of my character. Um, you know, I, I always get shit on for doing the Superman punch and we can go back and compare who did what first. I'm not going to do that. Um, but it, I always get called, you know, a uh, fee for, I'm just a, a Roman Reigns wannabe, essentially. Well, that was a move in MMA before Roman Reigns. Exactly. And like, that, that's where it came up with that name. Like, that was, I, I was yeah. doing that in UFC games when I had my Xbox 360. Like, <laughs> right. And, and, you know, I started doing that move because one of my trainers uh, was Tony Kazina, who trained, you know, with Davey Richards, Kyle O'Reilly. He's done a lot of things with Ring of Honor. He's doing stuff with New Japan now. Uh, he's in New Zealand with the Mala Dojo. And um, I trained with him for six to eight months. We had you know, a personalized storyline at the company that he was spending that time solely on working with me with character personality this and that and he was like why don't you start doing the superman punch you gimmick superman start doing the superman punch and um fast forward a couple months i'm working uh, just outside of st louis and there's a lot of mixed emotions about me doing that and a guy actually wrote an article and he's like look the dude looks like superman and it's an mma move he didn't steal it from anybody it, it just makes sense it goes hand in hand so with my character now if you know they have commentating and stuff, I said, "Hey, don't call it the Superman punch. Call it the Crown Fist." Because one of my favorite animes growing up was uh, S. Cryed, and the main character, he, you know, he did a big knockout punch and everything. And his final form of it was called the Crown Fist. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna run with that. And even though uh, Doc at RWA can never get it right, it's just two simple words. He can never get it right. It's uh, either the proud punch or the pride fist or the pride punch uh, it just it just clicked and so what i'm doing with my gimmick now is like i'm taking certain things and i'm incorporating anime references with it i i, I do an elevated roll the dice or the crossroads and you know i'm holding the guy in a dragon sleeper so i call it the shinron buster and um one of my favorite <laughs> you like that don't you <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just sitting here playing with my set of, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. That that's that's pretty good. Although if, if he can't figure out, you know, Pride Fist, you could always call it the Dragon Punch. Yeah, that's true. Or was it Dragon Punch? I think it called it the Dragon Fist, wasn't the it? Dragon Fist, excuse me, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I thought about that, but just I I like having my like, you know, yeah. little little Easter eggs here and there. I, Tony Casino was the one who suggested I do a Rainmaker, and uh, there's an amazing, amazing anime out that it's stupid that it's not being produced right now, but uh, it's called Black Clover, and one of his big moves is called the Black Meteorite, so I dubbed my Rainmaker the Black Meteorite, and just doing small things like that it's fun for me again. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do is be like a living anime character, whether I'm a good guy, a bad guy, my personality and how I do things and stuff. It just makes sense. You know, I do strike combinations now that I base off uh, monkey D Luffy from one piece. And, <laughs> and yes, I'll yell out like gum, gum, Gatling, gum, gum, bazooka, red Hawk, stuff like that. Just to be kind of, over the top but it's fun for me and i know when fans get it because i can feel that their appreciation or they, they pop for it i mean hell sword was there when i powered up and tried to go super saiyan at uh revenge pro wrestling <laughs> and i remember after doing that i think i think i think you had to cut away from someone else because i'm pretty sure you were laughing pretty hard as i was doing that and the camera was shaking or something i'm surprised it was it came out. It was. He starts to. He starts busting it out. I'm like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> you know, the camera shaking probably helped the effect. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the whole arena was, you know, just trembling and shaking around me. And have, have you ever know. tried to? Have you ever tried to get the fans to lend you their energy? I actually have. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's amazing. The, 
this this uh, this summer, I was in a triple threat match, and uh, we did the you know the tower spot in the corner, and of course I was on the bottom to do the power slam or the uh, power bomb. And right before I did it, I smacked the guy's back, and I stood back and I put my hands in the air. I was like, you know, uh, uh, Illinois, give me your strength. I can't remember the city off the top of my head, but I said the city, and said, give me your strength. And the crowd popped, and they put their hands up, and I was like, yes, we got this. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice. That's amazing. A real uh, life spirit bomb. <laughs> yeah. Well, and like recently, and uh, I think Sorg, I don't know if you caught it in my, uh, I mean, I've done it almost every match of uh, Pro Wrestling Conquest, but I started doing a special beam cannon chop. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll chop the guy once, I'll chop the guy twice, and then like I'll put my fingers up to my head and I'll charge up essentially, and the guy will try to like swing a bunch, like throw a bunch of punches and swing at me and stuff. I mean, hell, Jake something tried to duck it and I smacked him in the back, and then I let out a big chop on him, and uh, it's just simple things like that to where like I pop the crowd cool, but regardless, I'm having fun with it. It's, it's some of the things are silly, but. I don't care. I honestly don't well, care. I'm having fun. Even even the last conquest, you had Calvin Tankman, which, which tremendous tremendous match, tremendous talent, uh, and and uh, you did the you did the build up, chopped them, no reaction, and you're just like, I didn't charge up long enough, or I needed 30 minutes yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. no, that was, well, that was at Revenge Pro because uh, um, I think I said something like that there. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I, I think you did that time. there too. Yeah. Yeah, so. but yeah, Revenge, uh, Revenge Pro, that's when I knew, like, okay, I've really got to run with this. Because, yeah, one random fan was like, go Super Saiyan. And I just walked away from uh, John McChesney. I looked at him like, hey, man, I need three 30-minute episodes to pull that off. And then you heard the lady, I got a 20-minute time limit, so that's not happening tonight. <laughs> and then, of course, <laughs> and then, well, of course it, John... It could have happened quicker if someone murdered your best friend. Well, that's true, too, yeah. <laughs> but I don't... <laughs> I don't. I don't have a, a short ball friend to, right now, what but I, I do want to see if Aaron Drave or yeah, um, yeah Ronnie. Ronnie, I was waiting. You do now. <laughs> well, how about this, Ronnie? The next, the next Revenge Pro show, which I think might actually happen in November, I'll have a bag of some sensu beans, and when I give you the signal, you just run out and chuck the bag at me, and then I'll eat a sensu bean, in which they actually sell now. And uh, I'll just squash the guy. How about that? You just want me to scream, Goku! <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, God. you 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 try to help me. My opponent will kill you. Sure. And then uh, I'll just yell, like, crack head! It's up in my lungs. And then yeah. <laughs> we'll go from there. Perfect. Ronnie, Ronnie, you'll take another <laughs> bump for that, right? I love yeah, everything. I'll, I'll take a bump for that. I'll, yeah. I'll die for you, buddy. I, I, I love <laughs> everything about this. So and I love because because like by design I'm like I'm like oh Mike you haven't seen any of his matches yet you want me to send me he's like no I want to go in cold on this yeah <laughs> so. I, I, want, I want to go in cold like I, I want pure reaction yes. um but if you ever go heel you gotta practice your M just go a little yeah. lodging on the forehead mm-hmm. <laughs> you can join like an or I could just uh, I, I mean if we want to be technical if I ever go heel then I just gotta dye my hair pink right mm, mm. that's another yeah, that's cool. very true. Yeah. Very, very true. <laughs> so, or just get like a really dark tan and call myself uh, the the bearded. What was his name? Uh, Turtles, Tuttles. What was his? Oh, name? Turles. Uh, Turles. Turles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you come out with a big old dragon fruit and you take a bite of it before each match. <laughs> I'm surprised no one's right? done the uh, Raku on you. <laughs> the oh, name's man. Roku and it rhymes with doom and you're going to be hurting <laughs> all too soon <laughs> I love abridged I'm sorry oh man oh, well and at that at that same company that I did the spirit the tower spirit bomb I guess we can call it um I was, I was actually a tag match and I was tagged with Brandon Espinosa and he was actually knowing that we were in a tag team together. He actually wore Vegeta, like singlet trunks. Had the uh, he's got these custom white boots with gold tips and stuff. And I mean, it was so <laughs> dumb. But people Fantastic. were the people that got the reference were just eating it up and going crazy. That, That's awesome. Did you guys try? Did you guys try a fuse? 
Oh yeah, we, we actually that's what I meant to say. Yeah, we we did the fusion dance <laughs> like as they were announcing us as a tag team and stuff. <laughs> and before I walked out, I was like, Ooh. I was like, dude, I know you're shorter than me, but it's okay because Vegeta's shorter than Goku, so we yep. can make it work. We're doing the fusion dance when we get out there. He's like, no, 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 like please just let me have this moment. Wait, wait. So he was hesitant to do it, just like Vegeta was. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it, like, dude, it's gonna be awesome. Just, just, it's pro uh, wrestling. It's awesome. Let's just go with it. I would great. do my, v, I would do my Vegeta impression right now, but I haven't done it in a while, and my throat gets really sore when I do it. So I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> but that, that sounds amazing. Yeah, plus, you have to be at your ready to do your Vince McMahon impression because it's inevitable. Yeah, ex- absolutely. My, my power level is not nearly over nine thousand. Right no, now, so exactly. <laughs> I was just thinking, uh, the bar, didn't they do a fusion dance when they came out? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Of sorts? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they just did the like the final pose of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just a quick thing. So, yeah. But that was a nice um, nod. You know? Well, and of course, yeah. a New Day. New Day, yeah. They yes. came out in complete sailing gear. Yes. I mean, hell, yeah, they came out of a ginormous box of bootios wearing <laughs> sailing armor and... <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the best looking armor, but I didn't care. I popped for it. I was like, that's awesome. I mean, hell, I mean, Xavier always says crazy things with his hair, and he had his hair all spiked up like Goku's and stuff. And uh, I don't know if the rest of the guys were as big of Dragon Ball fans as him, but he was um, having the time of his life at least. Okay, so <laughs> the New Day podcast, they had a um, a TV show tournament that lasted over the course of two episodes of their podcast. Dragon Ball Z ended up being named their favorite TV show of all time. As a whole of the group. As, as a collective. All right. Wow. Yes. Well, then I stand corrected. So mm-hmm. it, it was it was pretty funny because like they're getting rid of shows like Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones. Like <laughs> they're just dumping all of them and they're like, I don't think we intended to end up with Dragon Ball Z as the best TV show of all time. But here we are. Well, and I mean, and hell, you look at what Dragon Ball Super did. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Dragon Ball Super took everything that everyone from the 90s and early 2000s hated on Dragon Ball Z about, and they, you can tell they listened to it and they perfected it. I mean, hell, the best part was the first time Goku went Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, or Super Saiyan Blue, everyone's like, what is that? He's just like, ah, you know, I could explain it, but we're just going to call it Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, or Super Saiyan Blue. Just mm-hmm. like kind of like that little jab at all those people that constantly <laughs> just bury Dragon Ball. Oh, they, you know, they just spend 30 minutes just screaming and powering up and this and that and he's like, ah, you know, just, it is what it is. Whatever. And yeah. um, but no, it's like it, Dragon Ball Z for its time was great and it was one of those things like it was just like a, a national treasure if you will of an anime but what Dragon Ball Super did was just amazing. Like just beautiful the storytelling the uh cinematics of it and everything but just the way they broke it down i mean the tower or the tournament of power was by far one of the best stories and it was so well played out like visually but just each character had its moments even your side characters that no one ever cared about you know like master roshi Frilla. i mean hell the episode was master roshi I mean, that was a, a tear jerker almost. I mean, just mm-hmm. I mean, when he had his moment with Frillin and Goku and all the flashbacks and stuff, it was like, you took this creepy old perv of a, you know, martial artist and turned him into this, you know, big badass hero. It was just, I was proud to be a Dragon Ball fan watching that arc. Yeah, it's like, it's like they brought him back to his roots almost. Right. Like, like he almost went full Jackie Chan again, which was great. Right, and but just the way they told the story, it, you know, they didn't drag it out anything out like they did in the original series that everyone, you know, harps on and stuff. They just got to the point. I mean, still you can knock it for like, you know, they say, hey, there's two minutes left in the tournament. What's going to happen? And then you have <laughs> ten, twelve more episodes of thirty minutes, and there's a lot of talking that lasts longer than two minutes. But that's that's anime. But when you break it down compared to what it originally was and how what GT was, they just knocked it out of the park. And it was just so beautifully done that, I mean, hell, I've watched Super, I mean, probably five times. And I, I laugh because I actually saw a meme earlier about 
people dog on One Piece, but they've watched Naruto and Dragon Ball Z five times. It's like, well, One Piece puts Dragon Ball Z powering up to shame for the way they drag things out. Um, so are you not a GT guy then? When I was a kid, like I liked it because it was different and stuff. I, I'm not going to harp on it like a lot of people do. I mean, it was still cool, different, but that was probably the one. I think I've watched it like two times through. But it's one of those ones like I just don't have any desire to go back and watch it. Like I didn't hate on it, but it wasn't like my cup of tea per se. I'm glad they made it canon essentially. And then what they've done with Dragon Ball Super going off of the Boo saga and everything, it just smashed it. And it, there's just no comparison compared. You know, when you go from GT to Super as a you know post Boo arc, there's just no comparison. So, you know, I think they had a different producer or writer for GT compared yeah. to Super. Um, so that dude was definitely on his aim. Yeah, yeah, it and, wasn't and, it wasn't Toriyama. And for those who don't know, like the other day, they're they're still hanging with us in this Dragon Ball conversation. I, I did watch. <laughs> so so, uh, I'm I'm somebody who Dragon Ball Z was just always on because like our institute, it was on every like they had Cartoon Network, Tsunami, on, Tsunami, Tsunami, like like so I I know most of it through that, especially the later Majin Buu era. Um, a little bit of the original series I've seen, and but I did see the entirety of GT. And GT was like we were shot to the future a little bit. Goku got turned into a kid for some reason, and there was a lot of stuff in space. Mm -hmm. Was that that, uh, that basically well, sums okay, it up so, from my recollection, so right? Basically, what happened was there was another group of um these Dragon Balls, another group of yes. Dragon Balls. Only there were the Black Star Dragon Balls. Right. That was created by um, King Piccolo before he split off. Yes. And um, they were more powerful Dragon Balls. And so uh, Emperor Pilaf was going to make a wish on them. And Goku interfered. And he's like, Pilaf said, oh, I wish you were a kid again. You know, just speaking Throwing at that a turn. Out there, yeah. Just speaking at a turn. And... And so everyone was like, your wish has been granted. And then Goku turned into a kid. And the Black Star Dragon Balls went off to all the corners of the universe. So that's yeah. why they were in space the whole time. Yes. And and then apparently each Dragon Ball had a, like a dragon that, you know, how, well, like, I don't know, they were like sealed away or something. Yeah, and... but yeah because, the, because the Dragon Balls got cracked. From yeah, years. that's right. And then mm -hmm. you had the, you know, Omega Shinron that could absorb all the Black Star Dragon Balls and become some um, ginormous badass. And it was this weird transformation, like all of his horns just became like ginormous on his back and stuff. And it wasn't really much of a change, but it was just like the, the, the premise of it compared to now, like, okay, we have to somehow grow our tails back and mm -hmm. stare at the moon. And power up to become Super Saiyan Four, which you gotta get just, some blunt waves going. Yeah, and <laughs> you uh, like Goku all of a sudden is an adult again. Like he can go Super Saiyan One, Two, and Three as a kid, but then he turns Super Saiyan Four. He's an adult again. Three fourths of his body's covered in red ape hair, and he's, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's got some red eyeshadow and stuff. It just, I mean, back then it was just like, man, this is yeah, that's kind of cool. And then you you think of it as you get older, it's like that was. It's kind of lame. Like, what was the whole premise of that? And then you see it now, and it's like, okay, this is a little bit more believable, a little less hokey. I mean, yeah, a guy's hair can only change so many colors, I guess. But at <laughs> least it's... I, I am noticing. So I've never seen Super, but Super is uh, the dub is available on Hulu. Uh, yeah. If you happen to have Hulu, if you got one of um, your Disney Plus right. packs, one hundred and thirty-one episodes. Oh yeah, yeah. and yeah. these titles are long, <laughs> and the titles. Don't read the titles because they will give away what happens in every episode. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yes. They give away yeah. what happens in every single I'm episode. spoiling myself just but, flipping through this? Yeah, stop that. <laughs> I mean, you won't understand it no. until you watch it. But, like, right. but like they'll, they'll say, like, Vegeta's last stands. Like, oh, I wonder what's happening this episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, when, when I first heard about Super... Because of GT, I wasn't that excited about it. It's one of those things like Dragon Ball Z was great back then. I still love it now. It was one of those things like just leave it alone. I 
And then I remember I was on the road uh, with some guys, and they mentioned it. I'm like, wait, that's still going on? They're like, oh, yeah, dude, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. And at that point, it was like 30-something episodes, and maybe, I mean, it had been around for six, eight months, we'll say. And I, I waited on it for like another couple of months. I was like, ah, nope, screw it. I got nothing to watch. I'll give it a shot. They had some dubbed episodes out at that point. So I started watching those, and I was just instantly hooked to a point where I caught up with the dubbed episodes that were aired. And I couldn't wait for the dub to come out when I saw that there was like 30-something more in the subtitled episodes. So I just said, F it. Like, I, I can hear the American voices in my head. I'll just watch the subtitled version. I can't wait for this. And yeah, I was hooked. I didn't. I finished everything else on the subtitled version, and then I instantly went back to the dub, rewatched the entirety, and got caught up again to where I think there was maybe 12, 14 episodes left. And yeah, I, I mean, they usually came out, I think, like Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday morning, and usually it was like when I was on the road home from somewhere, I had it pulled up as soon as it hit the night or one o'clock in the morning. I was watching Dragon Ball Z, or Dragon Ball Super on my phone driving home because I couldn't wait to get home like I couldn't wait till I got home to watch it and I mean it was just it was awesome it was beautifully done so Sorg and anyone else that's ever watched Super that says it you, you will not waste your time and I cannot commend what they did with that whole series enough mm-hmm. oh now I'm definitely going to get into that after right. that recommendation uh, for those curious Hulu does also have the original Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball GT but they are subtitled versions Yes, um, th- this is the problem. Well, they had the like the Cowboy Bebop. I was like, like not all of them were on dub. No, or Cowboy something Bebop like that. is dub. It, it well, it's but on Hulu it was funky because I was oh, trying okay. to watch I episodes think... and like it didn't seem like they had everything dubbed. I they fixed it because I just watched it. Did they? Oh, well, I don't know. I just bought it on Google Video like oh, okay. like a like a year ago, so I just watch it whenever I want. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, I mean, honestly, like. There's some that I watch on Hulu and stuff because they do stay pretty up to date. Yeah. Baruto and stuff, but other ones, like, like, yeah, One Piece is on Netflix, it's on Hulu. But realistically, I mean, you have to either watch it on Crunchyroll or I have a, a, a website that I go to that stays up to date with everything. And because, yeah, Hulu and Netflix, they'll only have like, some series, the first two or four seasons. And, well, hell, that's mm-hmm. like 40 to 80 episodes yeah. compared to you know their entirety and I mean One Piece is at like 12 1300 episodes right now and All right. it's I think I'm at like episode 800 something and that's one of those ones that's just like they drag it on so much that I just take breaks and I'll binge it for a day or two and then I'm like I, I can't Okay. So, so I have one more question before we have to go to break. I, here. I, I have one more. Okay, now. okay. My, uh, well, well, what, Mike, you go first. Uh, okay. What is your favorite Dragon Ball Z fight, not involving a Saiyan? Ooh. Not involving Ooh. a Saiyan. Ooh, that, that's a good one. Um, uh, you're really making me think, and like when you watch the entirety. <laughs> yeah i mean especially because uh, i i haven't thought about this since super came out so my answer might change now that i think about super and stuff but most of those had sayings involved so yeah i'm trying to think because a lot of the scenes from like super that i remember involve sayings and stuff but um There's not that many scenes with non sayings fighting. Um, as far as like Krillin didn't have that many shining moments. Piccolo had some during the Tournament of Power. But honestly, I would have to probably say it was there were some moments with uh Android seventeen and even Frieza during um the Tournament of Power. I mean, can I say like I'm going to say probably the final battle, even though Goku's a part of it, but they gave Android 17 and Frieza their due fighting mm-hmm. Jiren. And that's one of those scenes that really stuck up, stuck out to me 
just because like the storyline of those being two of Goku's worst enemies and stuff and the the animation of it was awesome. Because outside of that, I mean, favorite same fights with hell. Uh, what was her name? Kefla after they mm-hmm. fused that scene with Goku tapping into Ultra Instincts, one of the best scenes ever. Yeah. I mean, hell, he was charging up the Kamehameha while riding on his hands on the Kamehameha ball on those beams and stuff like that. That I mean, hell, I want to do a, like a back roll while someone and hit a Kamehameha after watching <laughs> that. You know? It's, um, they gave so many awesome scenes that like, I can't think of any Piccolo fight scenes that stood out to me. I can't think of any Gorilla ones that really stood out to me. I'm, I'm sad that you haven't brought up Hercule. <laughs> hey, you know what? I mean, uh, my 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 go to has always been seventeen versus um, Piccolo mm. from the Android Saga. That's always okay. been my go to. But I loved okay. his fight with I love seventeen fight with Ruby Ann. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Where he did like the the barrier going, like mm-hmm. that barrier just boy. When they came up with that idea, they're like, oh, we're gonna use this everywhere. <laughs> but, and, and that was I mean that was the thing that's why like, coming into this thinking about certain scenes and stuff without you know knowing anything that we're going to talk about like that's why I wanted to poke at with Super is how they ended that final battle was just so amazing and like again the storytelling of two of Goku's enemies because that's Goku's thing he, you know, he's had all these enemies but he's always been able to befriend them after fighting them you know they were ready uh oh! I think his, his phone, phone just, died. I think his phone, his phone died. died. <laughs> Cause he knew. Oh no! Next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully we can get him back. That, that, that you know what? That's that's probably appropriate because my question was going to be Dragon Ball Evolution. Oh. <laughs> Dragon Ball Evolution. Yeah, yeah. Oh, st- Sorg. Well, I started with Super, and then I watched Abridged, mm-hmm. and then I watched Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Wow. So you really, oh boy, you went all over the place. Wow. I did because, like, I started watching Super. I'm like, this is fucking awesome. I didn't go back and watch it, but then I found Dragon Ball, the the uh, the, not the, the original version. Yeah, and I'm like, I can't watch this trash. Because... Yeah, that that was so. You know, I came in discovering Dragon Ball Z, and then they started running the old Dragon Ball, and I'm just like, I can't do this. This is too goofy. Yeah. Right. So, but and that's the thing. It was all you know. It, it, everything. Well, that had a was that tone. was way more for kids. Now, yeah. now, now, I want Ronnie to go watch and give opinions on GT. Good news, GT is not very long. I will start watching GT tonight. All right, I mean, oh, I miss, no. yeah. <laughs> live tweet this Ronnie's shit. Ronnie's GT live tweet this shit. I'll, so, I'll yeah. live tweet it. Yeah. I'll All watch, right. I'll Ronnie's watch a GT episodes updates tonight. are gonna give me fucking life. Because so. you think I'm just gonna shit on it the entire time? <laughs> no, no. Because honestly, there's some really good shit in, G- in GT. Well, right, I'll watch it. Well, I, we're watch. gonna see if we can get our guest back on, or if his phone boots up, or whatever the case may be here. So. <laughs>